Welcome to Legendary Drops. My name is Ian, and big news, everybody. The developers have finally answered. They've answered our prayers. Actually, they've been doing that ever since they started making this game, ever since they started all of their interviews, ever since they've started engaging with the community every single day. You're seeing people that have quite literally made YouTube channels just out of highlighting different tweets throughout the week because this team is so engaged with the community there is so much content to be made and discussed just about every single day and honestly it's pretty wild hats off to those guys that can actually dig up that stuff i just don't have the patience for it myself but it, after seeing a lot of the updates that we've had after the developer interviews and the developer updates and all the other live streams and things like that and the the, the articles that have come out it is honestly insane just how much interaction we've had with these developers and it's on a level that i'll be honest with you i just don't see very often in any game regardless of the sphere whether it's a first person shooter or an arpg and today what i would like to discuss and the one thing that i would like to talk about is how well the diablo team is very well just answering our prayers they're doing the one thing that no developer has been doing lately which is wild because it's coming from blizzard from all places but this team is engaging with the community and my only hope is that this stays this doesn't stop because if they continue to do this at the pace that they've been doing it and i'm not expecting the exact same pace i mean obviously you're going to get a little bit worn out of it this is a lot of this is promotional material but still if they realize just how valuable this connection to the community is this game is going to be far more successful than a lot of people probably believe it's going to be You've seen it time and time again. I myself have said the same thing. How many times have you thought to yourself, the developers just don't understand what I want or what I need or what the community needs, and you feel like they're more and more disconnected from the game and the community every single time they update it, every single time there's a patch or whatever else there might be. And that's why this communication that we've had with the developers has been so valuable over time, so many meaningful changes, even just over the betas. And it's something that we just haven't seen from a lot of games in a really long time. And it's led to a lot of customer dissatisfaction across the board, regardless of genre. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk about some of the very specific points of exactly how and why all these different elements of community interaction lead to a more successful game and a much more healthier gaming community. So let's go ahead and discuss the very first key point, direct interaction. Live streams and social media platforms provide developers with a direct channel to interact with their community. This interaction fosters a sense of connection and involvement, making players feel heard, valued, and honestly, it helps them find other players to play the game with. It creates a community around the game. It creates a bridge between the players and the developers and also players to players. Establishing this relationship builds a lot of trust and a lot of transparency, and that's one of the things that we've really seen with Diablo 4. There has been a lot of transparency, whether it's been from the battle pass to the monetization to the skins that are in the game. We know just about everything to expect from Diablo 4 when it launches. Obviously, there are still some questions to be had, but I'm going to be honest with you. I feel like those questions are going to be answered at one point. Direct interaction is huge. And it's something that we do not see from other developers. Usually we just get some, like I said before, a just faceless update a wall of text that 90% of players aren't ever going to read or ever interact with. Actually, most of the casual players are gonna be sitting at home. Some of the people that probably don't even interact with videos like this, they don't even know why they are starting to not like the game they're playing over time. All of a sudden, it just slowly but surely feels worse and worse until they move on to the next game. But having all of this transparency, being out in the open, having these live streams, having these interviews that are posted on YouTube, talking with streamers and content creators to help promote the game and also promote the ideas of the things that they want to change in the future really helps to connect the community to the developers, which then in turn ends up involving a lot of those casual players that usually don't engage with content like this because eventually this kind of content finds its way into their algorithm or they end up hearing from it from a friend that does engage with that kind of content. You know, it's really important to have a community and the only way to really have one is if the developer ste steps up to actually make one in the first place. And that's where a lot of developers, they just tend not to do that. So this is one of the things that I feel is probably one of the most important pieces of Diablo 4, and it's 
one of the major keys to their success. To finalize on that point of community building, these live streams and the social media engagements facilitate a formation of a very passionate and dedicated community. The reason why is when these developers are actively engaging with the players, it's encouraging discussion, sharing experiences, and collaborating amongst the players themselves. You're seeing it on Reddit. You're seeing it in the YouTube comment section of every single video. You're seeing it all over Twitter. All these people with these positive stories of some people that are coming back playing Diablo after, you know, it's been 20 years since they've played a Diablo or and my 60 year old dad's going to play Diablo for the first time or me and my wife are going to play couch co-op. These kind of things help to build a community. More people connect with themselves. You have guys that are like, oh, hey, I'm actually married too. me and my wife are going to play. Do you guys want to play together? Things like that. That kind of stuff. We just don't really see that. We don't see it that often anymore because, well, the developers don't really engage with the community as much as they used to in the past. This community building process can lead to a incredibly loyal fan base that is more likely to support the game in a lot of ways. Not only just spreading positive word of mouth, fan art creation, and organizing player events, but they're more likely to spend money on the game. I mean, realistically, think back. Think back. Way back. No, I'm talking further back. Go back to like Halo and other games like that. Why were there massive communities around those games? It's because those games were built to have massive communities. It's because those developers did engage with the communities. They showed people, you know, how the game should be played when you had developers that were setting up all these LAN parties and things like that. And because it had this positive community and this positive vibe around the game, you had all these people that were going and talking about it at school, involving their friends, inviting their friends over to play. One person would tell another person. The next thing you'd know, everybody is playing together. Everybody's enjoying the game. Everybody's involved in a discussion around the game. And because of that, that game grew to massive popularity. I think one of the best examples of this is the Halo series. That game became a cultural phenomenon and that was because of the community that the game itself, the developer itself, tried to form around the game. Mind you, this is also part of Xbox's plan to begin with as well, but all of these things collided. All these special things came right into the perfect order to make something incredibly special. And while I don't believe Diablo 4 is on the level of you know, Halo 2 launch or Halo 3 launch or anything like that, I do feel like it is getting closer to that. It's developers hopefully, hopefully, remembering what it means to be a gamer. Now, outside of community building, one of the most valuable things that they're getting from all of this engagement with the community is player feedback. And this is one of the things that has to survive throughout this so that Diablo 4 is not only a game that's great when it's released, but it's a game that continues to grow and be great after its release. Players can express their opinions, suggest improvements, report bugs, and share all their experiences with the devs through all of these various platforms, whether it's live streams or social media or whatever it might be. By actively listening and responding to that feedback, developers are making informed decisions. They're not just making choices off the seat of their pants. They're actually making informed updates, patches, and future content additions. This iterative process helps to refine the game specifically to players, addressing their concerns and enhancing the overall gaming experience for everybody. And this is usually where every single developer ends up, well, fucking it up. Every single one of them. They all seem to have this weird notion where they don't necessarily need to listen to the cries of the player. And don't get me wrong, because on average, you don't want to listen to individualized players. You've seen that issue pop up and say, oh, I don't know, World of Warcraft, where they're listening to the top 1% of players rather than what the needs of the general population of players are wanting or needing from the game. And that's why engaging on these platforms is so important. Making sure to keep that open line of communication means that you're going to hear from as many voices as you possibly can. And that's incredibly important. Because if you're only listening through very, very limited channels like forums, I'm going to be real with who uses forums? Nerds. Nerds use. I mean, I, I'm a nerd. I'm not that much of a nerd. I don't think I've ever even used a forum in my entire life. Maybe I've like read off of a forum, but I've never actually posted off of a forum. I mean, good on you for being that, you know, engaged and invested in a game. No judgment there. You're a turbo nerd. Go giga chat. Good for you. But that's just not something that I've ever engaged with. And I don't think it's anything that the larger community engages with either. 
So while sometimes more general concerns can be brought up through forums and things like that, I don't feel like those are the best forms of communi communication going forward for any of these developers. It should be through Twitter. It should be through YouTube or Reddit or places like that, because that's where you're going to probably see a larger majority of voices, a more average of customer concerns than you would through, say, forums or other direct channels. I also really believe that engaging with the content creators of these games and their communities is probably one of the biggest and best things they can do for themselves going forward. I know people are going to say, oh, well, they don't like the opinions of certain content creators, and that's fine. Well, then go support the ones of, that have the opinions that you do actually enjoy, because those ones are probably speaking for you and other people like you. And sometimes when you're seeing these guys that have 20, 30,000 people that are watching their streams, well, that actually does make up for a pretty large portion of an audience. Now, mind you, with a game like Diablo, which is going to sell millions upon millions of copies, you know, that's kind of a drop in the bucket, but still it's a much bigger focus group than most of these companies are ever going to get a chance to actually have contact with. Now, I'm going to tackle something else that is pretty obvious to most people, but I feel like it has some real hidden fruits that a lot of developers don't grab. And it's the increased marketing and promotional content that they get from actually staying engaged with the community. These live streams and these social media interactions serve as these powerful marketing tools. Through these channels, developers are announcing their updates, expansions, or DLCs, sharing teasers or trailers, and they're showing some exclusive sneak peeks into the community, showing how that game is made, staying engaged with the community, what they've been doing already up to the release of the game. But that doesn't have to stop once the game is released, and I feel like that's where a lot of developers end up dropping the ball. And in most cases, the only time that we ever see developers continue to stay engaged and continue to promote their content like they did at the very beginning of their game is really just with MMOs, maybe World of Warcraft. I think better example would be like Final Fantasy XIV with their live letters. This helps to maintain not only interest in the game, it attracts new players and it encourages existing players to continue playing the game. Now, before I was talking about how there was a, a hidden fruit, a hidden benefit to continuing on with all of this engagement and all of this promotional material and that's building trust and building loyalty within the community because the more you stay engaged the more they trust you and the more they stay loyal to the game that you have and that's one of the things that's actually not one it's the thing that you need for a game to remain successful is a very loyal and a very trusting fan base and the only way that you're going to pull that off is if you remain engaged with them if you pull back that's when we don't trust you anymore if all you do is drop walls of text on us, we don't trust you anymore, especially when you have to deliver bad news because we all realize that you are a company, you want money, that's what you're in business for. But if you can't come to us and say it to our face, why are we going to trust you? It doesn't make any sense. You wouldn't do that to anybody in person. And if you would, then you're a coward. So why are you doing it to us? And that's where a lot of the disconnect between the player and the developer really comes from. I would actually say, this is going to be a hot take. People are going to probably not be happy about this one in the comment section, but that's cool. Overwatch 2, dropping PvE. If they were more transparent throughout the entire development process, staying engaged with the community, telling them about the difficulties that they're having or something like that, then maybe the community would have been a heck of a lot less pissed the minute that they found out that PVE wasn't going to be in the game anymore. Or maybe the community would be a little bit more patient and the company would say, oh, wait a minute, you know, the community is actually being really patient with this. They really want this to come out. Um, they're being, you know, really cool about the whole thing. You know, we, we don't have all the resources to put towards the PVE right now. So we're going to tell them that and we're going to tell them we're focusing on the live service, but we're still going to be working on it. We're going to stretch the deadline or whatever it might be. Obviously, you're still going to have some backlash, but I feel like it would be far less than it would be if you guys just randomly out of nowhere drop a bomb and say, guess what? It's gone. Hope you guys like what you got. Um, this is one of the things that leads to a lot of games failures and a lot of games falling into the background over, over, the, over the long run. So this is something that I'm really hoping that Diablo continues to do because I think it's probably one of the most important things that they have to do is remaining engaged with us, telling us what's going on, telling us the struggles that they're having, tell us the plans that they have for the future of the game. As long as we remain a part of that, the game's gonna be successful. 
Now, one of the added benefits to staying engaged with the community is actually creating community-driven content. And this is something that we've seen from some of the most successful titles in video game history. And it's something that for some odd reason, a lot of developers just don't engage with on a level that they should. I mean, if you really think about it, just about every game that's out there only has a very limited amount of people that are working on that game. So if you're involving the community in the development process, that means the developers can tap into the collective creativity of their player base. Live streams and social media interactions that they currently have going on give them new ideas for features, characters, levels, gameplay mechanics, all kinds of different things. Things that they themselves may have never came up with, but they ended up finding from the community. Developers can integrate some of these community suggestions into the game, and guess what that does? That creates loyalty. That creates trust. And that's huge for a game's future. I think one of the best examples of this is Terraria. If you guys haven't heard of it, you're missing out. It's honestly one of the greatest games of all time. It's actually, weirdly enough, my favorite game of all time. Initially, I didn't think I was going to say that it is, but now that I look at it, I have more time in Terraria than I've probably had in just about every single game. Except for World of Warcraft. I have a lot of hours in World of Warcraft. And Final Fantasy XIV. I got, I, got I got a lot of hours in there too. But, and Diablo actually. I play a lot of games. Anyway, Terraria is incredible. And one of the things that has been a massive success factor for them is the fact that they have stayed engaged with their community the entire time. Now, obviously, they have modding, which that creates an entirely different thing. And I highly suggest every developer allow some type of modding tools for the community because it is such an incredible tool moving forward for the developer. You look at a game like Terraria where these people have gone and made these incredibly intricate mods where they're literally their own game. Calamity is its own game. And the developers of Terraria then look at that content, see the things that the community enjoys, and they start integrating that stuff into the base game. Terraria still today, the game came back or came out in like 2010, 2011, just back in 2021, it won the Steam Award for Labor of Love because they're still updating the game today, still doing major content patches, even though they said they wouldn't do it anymore, but they still do it. We know it's a lie. That's huge. Over a decade of communication, and that's from a small team in Indiana. I'm sorry, but <laughs> I would like to believe that a massive corporation in California should be able to pull off the same thing. And I'm not saying that Blizzard needs to continue the exact same speed at the exact same pace that they've been going so far with a lot of the communication and a lot of the engagement that they've had with the community. But I will expect them to continue to some ends of this because there's so much potential here. And I feel like that's true for a lot of games that come out especially some of the best AAA titles that we've experienced over the last few years. Why let potential go to waste? There's no reason. Tap into the community. Help them help them help you create one of the best experiences of all time. Feels like it's a no-brainer. All right, so I've said it on multiple occasions. I have been incredibly impressed with everything that the Diablo 4 dev team has done from basically day one. Every single time that I turn around, it's a tweet or a live stream or a new interview that's hopping up on YouTube and it's always good news. It's always positive engagement and the community around the game is also just as positive and just as excited as the developers that are making the game and it's just a beautiful thing to see and I want to continue to see it and I get from a lot of people's perspective this is coming from one of the worst developers in all of video games and I completely understand where you're coming from. I actually just recently did a video on why people hate Activision Blizzard and also how we as players engage with uh, with video game developers. It's a really cool meta discussion. If you guys would enjoy it, you should definitely go watch it. Um, it's cool. So yeah. But anyway, that's all I have for this video. Um, I feel like it's really important that they stay engaged with the community. I feel like they've been doing a great job so far and we need as consumers of the game, as fans of the game, we need to hold them and keep them honest and, may, and hold them responsible and make sure that they continue to stay engaged with us. Stay vocal about wanting to continue to stay engaged with them. Uh, this is a team, especially looking at like Rod or Joe or anybody like that, they, they obviously love the game. They obviously love Diablo. And I think it spells a lot of success for this game going forward. 
Um, Diablo is just a ride around the corner. It's only just a couple more days away. I'm losing my fucking mind. I want to play it right now. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys do enjoy the content, like and subscribe. Drop a comment down below. Um, I'm going to start streaming on Twitch. I'm going to announce that after every single video now because I need to start streaming on there instead of YouTube because YouTube kind of isn't necessarily the best sometimes for streaming. It kind of is what it is. But um, I, I hope you guys enjoyed the video again. Um, stay cool. Stay righteous. Stay safe. Uh, see you guys in Sanctuary. Join the Discord uh, and say hi to the cat. <laughs>